This video covers some of the most common questions on the GRE. So it's super important you know how to handle these kind of questions confidently and correctly. There'll be five questions. Any one of them could definitely come up on your test, if not more than one of them. Starting with this question. If Emily's salary were 20% higher, it would be $31,200. If Philip's salary were 20% lower, it would be $22,400. Philip's salary is what percent greater than Emily's? Give your answer to one decimal place. Let's focus on that first sentence. If Emily's salary were 20% higher, don't get intimidated by trying to translate all of it in one go. That's where errors will creep in. Just the first phrase at a time. Let's just translate that first part of the phrase. If Emily's salary were 20% higher. How do you increase something by 20%? By the way, if you're not sure, I've got another video on percentage tricks to check out. But for now, you can just learn that to increase something by 20%, you multiply by 1.2. So if we call Emily's salary X, remember, we're calling it X because we don't know what her salary is. Of course, if we knew the number, we'd put the number. We don't know what it is, so we have to make up a letter here. You can do it without algebra, but that's when you've had much more practice. For now, let's just write out the equation every single time. If her salary was 20% higher, so 1.2X, it would be, the would be means equals, it would equal 31,200. That's the equation to come up with. Again, we're using X because we don't know her actual salary. We just know that if it was 20% higher, if it was multiplied by 1.2, it would equal 31,200. Now, of course, we can divide both sides by 1.2 and we get what her salary actually is. Doing this on the calculator, of course, you get that her salary is $26,000. And you can check that's correct because if you increase that by 20%, if you multiply it by 1.2, you do get 31,200. Let's try the same thing with Philip's salary. This time it's 20% lower. If you're not sure how to decrease something by 20%, think about what we did for increasing. We did one plus the 20%, 1.2. So now it's going to be 1 minus the 20% or 100% minus the 20%, giving us 80%. That's how to reduce something by 20%. That's how in one step to make something 20% smaller. You multiply it by 0.8x. Now you might have thought, okay, I could just find 20% and then take it away. But that's much harder to write in algebra. Instead, if you just remember that to decrease something by 20%, we multiply by 0.8 that's gonna be a lot quicker. Just to give you another example, if you were decreasing something by 30%, you would multiply by 0.7. But let's get back to the equation that you can see on the screen. How did I come up with that? Remember, the second sentence said, if Philip's salary were 20% lower, so 0.8x, it would be, again, the would be is equals 22,400. Now, the solving it is kind of easy. Divide by 0.8 both sides and you get 28,000. If you still want more practice on this, the next question is gonna deal with something fairly similar. So you can try that one yourself, but we're not actually done. We didn't want to know what each salary was. The actual question was, Philip's salary is what percent greater than Emily's? Now, do you know your percent greater than and percent less than formula? If you don't know it, you really do need to know it because it comes up all the time. It's new minus original divided by original times 100. That's the formula for percent increase, percent decrease, percent greater than, percent less than, percent fewer than, percent more than. All of those type of questions would use this formula. Now, some of you may say, but what's the original? As I've written at the bottom, the original is always the number after the word than. That's the denominator. That's the thing you're comparing against the amount after the word than. Now I have taught this in other percentage videos that I've done, but students often forget it. So I'd really emphasize, remember that the original is the amount after the word than. And of course, you also need to know the whole formula. New minus original 
divided by original times 100. So here, the new would be Philip because the original was Emily because Emily comes after the word than. So we would do 28,000 minus 26,000 divided by 26,000 because Emily was the 26,000. I probably could have done E for Emily and P for Philip. Maybe you shouldn't have used X both times, but you can improve on my working out with even clearer algebra. Either way, that's the formula and it gives you 7.7%. Okay, we covered a lot there, but I did promise you in the title it would be a wordy percentage set of questions. So let's get to the next one. If Sophia's salary were 30% higher, it would be 20% less than Philip's. Before we even keep reading, let's just translate some of these phrases. If Sophia's salary were 30% higher, how do you increase something by 30%? You multiply by 1.3. Do we know Sophia's salary? No. So we're going to use an X or maybe an S, but an X is clearer, I think. An S kind of looks like a five sometimes. Anyway, so we have 1.3 X. Then the phrase says, it would be. Now remember, it would be means equals. And I'll give you a list of phrases in a moment. It's is, has, have, would be, will be. But anyway, here in this case, it would be means equals. What about 20% less than? How do you find 20% less than? As we saw in the previous question, that's 0 0.8 times. Less than Phillips. Do we write P for Philip or Y? No, because they tell us in the next sentence that Philip's salary is $60,000. So because they told us the number, we can just write 60,000. We don't need algebra. We only used X for Sophia because we didn't know her salary. Now let's solve this equation. 0 0.8 times 60,000 is 48,000. Finally, to find X, we divide both sides by 1.3 and we get X to be this lovely number, 36,923.08, and that's Sophia's salary. But that wasn't the actual question. Remember, these are wordy percentage questions. The question was, then 5,000 would be what percent of Sophia's salary? By the way, do you notice how I've done it step by step? I haven't read all the way to the end of the question, got really scared and given up. I've just done it bit by bit, what I do know. Okay, so 5,000 is what percent of Sophia's salary? And we now know what Sophia's salary is. So we're gonna cover this more in a next question, but percent of, you just divide them. So 5,000 as a percent of, the word after percent of, it just becomes your denominator. So 5,000 over Sophia's salary of 36,000, giving us the decimal 0 0.135, which we can translate into percentage by times in by 100, 13.5%. That was testing percent of, which we'll come to more in the following questions. But the original concept of giving the unknown amount the letter X and then increasing or decreasing with one point whatever or zero point whatever and writing the equation with is being equals, would be being equals, that's the skill I want you to become confident at by re-watching the video if necessary and testing yourself with lots of further questions. Now, I did tell you that percent of would come back because we have quantity A, 60 as a percent of 40, quantity B, 70 as a percent of 50. Some of you may be able to do this in your head, but I'm gonna show you the proper way. As I've written down below, as a percent of is different from percent greater than. We don't use that formula. As we saw earlier with the 5,000 as a percent of 36,000, we do the first number divided by the second number. Just simply 60 divided by 40 in this case, giving us 1.5, and any decimal you can translate to a percentage by times in by 100. That's 150%. The way you'd say it in English is 60 is 150% of 40. Let's do the same thing for quantity B. 70 as a percent of 50 is 70 divided by 50, which equals a decimal 1.4, times by 100, and that's 140%. So quantity A is bigger. Moving on. Now it's a similar seeming question, but it's putting some of those skills we learned earlier to good use. Can you write the equation for this one? 12 is 5% of X. 20 is 8% of Y. What's bigger, X or Y? As I've reminded you down below, 
is, was, has, have, would be, will be, all mean equals. Okay, first equation. 12 is, that's 12 equals. 5% of, as you can see, that's 0 0.05 times x. Now, some of you might complain, why isn't it 1.05 or 0 0.95? 1.05 was for increasing by 5%, like if x had gotten bigger by 5%. 0 0.95 was for if x got smaller by 5% or was reduced by 5%. This question just said 5% of. So we don't have anything to do with 1, just 0 0.05 times x. So 12 is, 12 equals 5% of 0 0.05 times x. Let's quickly solve that, divide both sides by 0 0.05, so x is 240. Can you set up and solve the next equation? 20 is, that's 20 equals, 8% of 0 0.08 times y. Divide both sides by 0 0.08 and you get your y, which is 250. So in this case, y is bigger, slightly, so quantity b is bigger. Time for the final question. And yes, the test can be this wordy and convoluted. But I hope by now you're starting to be confident at, if not enjoy, percentages. Let's do this one. 16% of 250 is 25% of what number? 16% of 250, notice it didn't say increase by 16%, that would be 1.16. It didn't say reduce or lowered by 16%, that would be 0 0.84. It just said 16% of 250. So that's 0 0.16 times 250. Then it said is, what did you write down? Hopefully you wrote equals 25% of, remember, didn't say increase or decrease, just 25%. So equals 0 0.25 times x. Then the left, we could just work out using a calculator or in your head, giving you 40, 0 0.16 times 250. So 40 equals 0 0.25. Divide both sides by 0 0.25, x is 160. That is a tour de force of the most common percentage questions you'll get on the test. If any aspect was confusing, you can either rewatch or let me know in the comments and ask some questions. I've got three other percentage videos, I believe, all of them in my week one playlist covering everything you need to know on arithmetic. Do check them out. Have a great day.